I'm Bianca, your personal American accent coach, and I'm here to help you master an American accent in English because your voice is your choice when it comes to how you sound. I try to release a podcast episode every two weeks, and so you should really subscribe to whatever podcast platform you use so that you don't miss the newest episode. And by the way, if you want to see the full video of the episode, it's available at Accent Coach Bianca on YouTube. Now, let's get on with the show. So today, William, I'm so excited to have you back. We're going to talk about community and we're going to talk about our Discord community being a safe space for learning because mm -hmm. I think maybe one of the most important things when you're working on a language is feeling comfortable and being willing to to be vulnerable and sharing in a space so that you can make mistakes, so you can get corrected. How, how do you feel about that? Number one, being a, an English language learner, not having grown up in a household with English. And then number two, being the moderator of our Discord server. Oh, wow. Hello, a lot of questions in one shot. <laughs> let, let me see if I will remember everything. <laughs> <laughs> Slow down, take it easy. We've got plenty of time. <laughs> yeah, yes. It's true that in order to make mistakes, you have to be comfortable making mistakes. Is Usually we'll see, ah, I made a mistake. Uh, uh, let me delete that mistake. Let me uh, hide it that nobody is watching, all of that. So what you want is a safe space. Like I practice in front of my, the mirror or alone at home, or in my room, something like that. So if you're in, in a small community of people who, who share the same goal and values and objective with you, it's a game changer because you are open. You just express as you want. You feel comfortable. And it's how then you can learn from the genuine mistakes you're doing. You're not, because you can make mistakes like now, for instance, if I'm recording this pod podcast, I'm, I'm aware that I did some mistakes already of my intonation or speech, but I don't, I don't care. I don't feel ashamed with those mistakes because I'm relaxed. It's not that, oh, I'm making those mistakes because I'm tense. If mm -hmm. I was not tense, I, it's very likely I will not do those kind, kinds of mistakes. So you reminded me of this idea of being tense and how people will often make a mistake, but they themselves might not even know, is it just a mistake because I haven't had my coffee, because I'm tense for whatever reason, or is it actually an error? And here's the thing mm. that I don't know it's wrong, right? So if you know it's wrong, you can fix it. And if you can just say, oh, I'm, I was just a little nervous. It's fine. I actually know what I'm supposed to do there. That's a whole different ball game than mm. not even knowing the mistakes that you're making. So I just wanted to interject that in our time together, we try to get people to notice, hey, is this something that I really do know? Or is this something that I don't even know that I don't know? If that makes sense exactly. to you. Hmm. Yes. So my other question was, you being the moderator of our Discord server, how do you feel about having a safe space and, and being a part of creating a safe space for, for learning English? Yeah. So I was there since the beginning, by the way. It's been some years. So I have been more or less the evolution of the community and yeah that we could simplify that there are different uh, stages so what's harder is to break the ice so let's say the community already exists so you join the community people already are uh, know each other at some degree they don't know the, uh, in real life and oh you have to break the ice right that, oh i'm the noob i i feel like i'm in the middle of uh, i don't know uh cocktail party mm -hmm. that has been, has been going for a couple of hours and then mm -hmm. I have to chime in, break the ice. Hey, I, I do exist. Hey, mm -hmm. my name is mm -hmm. William. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Which can be very awkward, right? Sorry. You go to a cocktail party and maybe you don't, maybe one or two people, but it's a room of other people. Maybe you don't know anybody and you've been brave enough yeah. to like show up at this party. I feel like it's very similar. Sorry. I feel like it's very similar then it's very similar to have that same feeling of I'm walking into this thing I don't know. And one of the mm. things is we try to make it super welcoming with our onboarding, with literal introductions when people come in for the first time, because yeah, that first impression makes you feel like you want to participate or you want to just hang back and you're a little bit scared and you want to hide a little bit. Is that what you were talking about? Is that what you meant? Yeah, I was leading more or less there. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what I have noticed is that some people engage right away, are very open. They just speak out loud on the first 10 minutes or the first opportunity they have. And some others is take it easy. Let me first listen. I, I want to speak today. 
perhaps I need three times because I'm shy, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. But eventually they will get comfortable. Mm -hmm. So the, the point is that not everyone has the same rhythm, the same pattern because of their personality, their culture or mm -hmm. anything. Exactly. Uh, but eventually what they noticed is that most of people get comfortable. Mm -hmm. Even if they, some of users need more time, eventually, mm -hmm. okay, now I will start reading what we do. Mm -hmm. Then I will get the corrections or, oh, I did this mistake. Nah, nah, nah. And then I will create the engagement. And then I will show up. Even if today I'm lazy, I didn't want to do anything. Just watch Netflix. Mm -hmm. It's, oh, it's time. I get the notification. Ah, let me join. Mm -hmm. Because now I'm used. I feel that I belong. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's like when you meet with your friends every, you know, every Friday, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. It's hey, I miss this. It's been a, it's mm -hmm. been two days that I missed that, mm -hmm. two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, now I sh I forgot that your exact question because I have been speaking <laughs> too long. <laughs> yeah, well, and it, like. As, I, as a fine, yeah. because we're here to talk about the safety of the space yeah. and i feel like that's part of it we are totally okay with going off yeah. on tangents for example i'm just gonna pause what you're saying right now to mm -hmm. also add the fact that's the reason that we have our feedback club time our sessions are on tuesday and we're saying okay we are here right now to get feedback that's what we're doing today we have a job right and like you said if you're not comfortable doing that if you just want to watch you don't even have to turn your camera on if you don't want to like mm -hmm. it's your level of comfort is determined by you and it's encouraged by us but the other thing i wanted to mention what you were saying about just hanging out like every friday that's what we have but we have it on wednesdays we have our office mm -hmm. hours where we literally yep. just hang out and we talk about movies that we've been watching it's also a Q&A session for anybody who has questions, but the majority of the time we just sit there and we hang out and I look forward to that very much that where that yeah. pressure is even taken off completely and we're doing zero correction and we're just getting to know each other. And that's to me, that's what the community is all about. So I think the question we started with was, hey, you're the moderator. You created this safe space. And we started talking about you being yeah. the moderator. Well, and then we just ended up talking about how it feels, I think, to hmm. be there. So for so, me, that's the important thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely agree. Going a little back to answer your question, more mm -hmm. or less, is as a moderator, I haven't had much task to do because I haven't need to censor people or to, hey, please behave according mm -hmm. to the rules. Or mm -hmm. I haven't, I need, haven't need that. Uh, Actually, the opposite happened. Do you remember in, we're all adults here. So yeah. when we were, <laughs> we were in Feedback Club one time, uh, yeah. And I know do you remember what happened? Maybe you can tell that story. Yeah. So in Feedback Lab, one of the things you can do is that you can bring one text that you want to read. Usually you just copy the text from a website, the book, whatever, and you paste it in Discord. And there was one word, I think it was just shit or shit. Shit or hell or some no, yeah, shit. pretty innocuous. It wasn't yeah, like racist. It wasn't like a slur or something. It was yeah. just good old fashioned swear word. Yeah. Yeah. And we had the default bot in Discord that moderates the content. And it was this word, yep, I'm not allowed, you're not allowed to post this message because it contains this uh, swearing word. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. imagine if we needed so little moderating that it's been like, I don't know, many years, months that mm, no one has said any bad word. So imagine how little moderation I needed to do that some a uh, member of the feedback lab wanted to read some piece of text. I don't know from what, from where, let's say it's a website and contain the swear word, quote unquote, because it was mm -hmm. just shit or shitty. It's mm -hmm. not that a big deal, but it was enough for the default Discord bot that, hey, I'm not, go I'm not letting you post this message because it contains this swearing word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So imagine that so little opportunities that, oh, it's been, I don't know how long we are, we are running this and you're the first one to put this <laughs> a word like that. But more years, important, I think, I think it took yeah, years no. for someone to trip that bot. Yeah. But uh -huh. I think it happened. It wasn't the first time or the very Somebody first. Somebody had a username, I think that had a swear yeah, word in it. But and there it was, was one like, other time, but that was it. Yeah. yeah. Super anecdotal. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, it's not just what is written, but can be censored easily by bots. Mm -hmm. It's when we speak. Because mm -hmm. we have the microphone opens and it's mm -hmm. it's live, by the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We haven't had 
the need to hey let's come let me mute uh yes. your phone your microphone let's go down mm -hmm. oh, this never happened it's and we had people yeah we had people from different backgrounds countries cultures relations mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. whatever you want but yeah what yeah. we have in common that we want to work on our actions eventually everyone enjoys it's com it's comfortable on being corrected yes. and correct someone else which is not mm -hmm. the same thing yes i think in many groups the most important thing are the rules right you say hey we are a respectful mm. group these are our rules it's always the first thing you do when you join a group and like you said just the kind of people we attract we feel like we barely need to do those things it's procedural to say here are the rules of our group but like how often do we have behavioral issues or never like never yeah, what's never. the worst that happens somebody says oh sorry can you hear my baby crying in the background or somebody yeah, so, forgets hmm. that their microphone is open it's never you don't get those people who jump in and just try to cause trouble or anything like that so, yeah trolls you mean yeah. <laughs> yes trolls exactly we don't we just don't have that problem so we have a safe community it is moderated but we don't really even have that much of a need because it is so safe already yeah, I, and fun uh-huh ironically most of the time was to help. Hey, how I'm new to the Discord. How do I join uh, this channel? Or I don't see, oh, yeah. or I don't see this event, or how you see all of those mm. questions. So it was more just organizing where organizing the server. Yeah. The different oh my god. Like channels uh, and yeah, the, 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 the different, the different clubs or, yeah. of that. So it was mo most about Q Q and A. Mm -hmm. and onboarding users more than moderating the those users mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes and and there, that's about i feel like feeling safe too especially because mm -hmm. most of the people we attract they've never been on discord before so for most people their first experience with this app is mm -hmm. with our server so i think we provide a really inviting way to enter them into the world of discord as well not just into our community but into the wider kind of tech community and a lot of people mm. have learned that they can go and explore other discord servers too and then they're already comfortable with how it works so yeah, there's like I'm... a level of comfort with the language there's comfort with the people there's comfort with the technology mm. and i think that our group kind of bundles all that together and because of that i think people are really motivated they're like oh my gosh i found my people and they're gonna they're gonna help me into this little world and that makes them super motivated right because people end up encouraging each other and they say oh it's okay that you left your mic on i've been there too it's okay that you couldn't find the right channel i we've mm -hmm. all been there it's, it creates part of this shared experience that then motivates us all to to learn more and i think you're a good person to speak about motivation because that's that's one of your passions <laughs> Just yeah. in life. And also you've been a source of motivation, I think, for everybody there. Because let's say there's a day where you have a work meeting or something and you're not in our sessions. Then it's funny because everyone's like, oh, where's William? Like we notice you're missed when you miss these things. So maybe take us through like how this motivation has affected you and what's happening in our group. Okay. So let me start. Even before Discord, mm -hmm. we started with the, this community. So we see the before and after the mm -hmm. community. Community. Good one. <laughs> I, I also wanted to improve my English at a certain point because of requirements of my job. Mm -hmm. But it was mostly uh, written, in the written medium. Yeah, one conference here and there, but uh, not, not a big deal. I, I could speak very wrong, mispronounce it a lot, because I was a researcher and all of that. That I moved on in life. Mm -hmm. is you know what let me start a youtube channel because i want to share something i had some many things to share and i realized oh wow i speak i'm not at the level i thought i was mm -hmm. i wasn't unaware of the inequalities i was doing and all of that mm -hmm. but yeah i started but then i dropped it's there's no continuity because uh, there's no engagement then uh, eventually i think it was in 2020 we met mm -hmm. And then we, and after a while, it was not at the same time, but after a short while, you created the Discord server mm -hmm. and then the a small community. And then I participated there in those yeah. feedback clubs. And it's when I was engaged that, hey, now that I had the opportunity that it just happened because it was not my goal, I was just invited that, hey, feel free to join those sessions. 
um, is oh now that it just happened I'm hooked uh, not necessarily the community uh, or the it's like the I, I don't know how to call it it's more abstract because mm -hmm. you know that people come and go mm. so if we take two years into the future perhaps not only you and me are in both places mm -hmm. it's like when you have a TV show that drags for for forever like Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> Yes. That then all of the main cast is different. There's the one from the first season, or mm -hmm. only the protagonist mm -hmm. is, is mm -hmm. from the first season. Yeah. Let's more or less use this analogy. In, mm -hmm. Hey, everyone else is is new. Let's say it was not from the original committee, but since it's very incremental that someone joins, someone moves on, and so on, it's very organic. Mm. It's you feel that you belong on that mm -hmm. community. It's not necessarily with these specific people, which is also true, that you feel attached at some degree, is that it's a continuum that I belong on this community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even if I am the moderator, it's not that, hey, I'm the moderator because it's my responsibility, it's, it's my job. Mm -hmm. It's no, it's I belong here. Yes. yes. I feel I belong. And we celebrate, like, one of our members had a baby, at least one. One another one got divorced, at least. Like, we <laughs> celebrate, we talk about our gastrointestinal issues that we've been having. It's a family, I feel. And we celebrate that with not only just, like, life experiences. Somebody got a job recently. Another person didn't mm. make the cut for this other thing. And, oh, we say, oh, you're starting your classes again. And we, we know each other well enough. To That's... say, hey, how was your weekend mm -hmm. is one of the first things that we see. So on a personal level, but also I think you mean too, celebrating progress. I notice and other oh. people notice because they know each other. They say, oh, you're not making that mistake you used to make anymore. Yeah, We can hear that your connected speech is better. Things like that. I know that you've found that out in other people. Yeah. Such a good insight. A golden nugget right there that I missed. Because of this continuity, even if you don't, you never met the person in real life, you hear or you watch if they share the webcam in the video is, hey, I'm familiar with you, your speech, your yes. idiosyncratic speech, or uh -huh. there there's one technical word for that. Idiolect, your idiolect. Ah, that, yeah, uh -huh. exactly. Yeah. Idiolect, idiolect. Uh -huh. Yeah. Is, hey, I can now measure your progress because you were not voicing at the end of the C level. Now you uh -huh. do. Or you used to do this mistake. Now it's not there or not as often. Exactly. And yeah. you don't get this if you just hang in a random server yeah, no. and you practice with random people, mm -hmm. it's very likely you will not see the, those same people again mm -hmm. because there's way too many people uh, in yeah. the yeah. server or, and so on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just because it's in a small committee, you get those perks. Yes. And exactly. knowing your progress, it's a big deal. Yeah. Because if I practice alone without a community, so I just, I don't know, I watch your videos, mm -hmm. for instance, mm. but I only practice, I do the ghosting or all those techniques, but alone at home, mm -hmm. because I'm shy and I don't feel safe. And mm -hmm. all of that mm -hmm. is, please don't hear me. Uh, don't listen to me. Uh, perhaps I'm making progress, but I am unaware of mm -hmm. that progress. Mm -hmm. So imagine if, even if I am unaware, someone else can track this, even if they are, it's not their intention. It's just subconsciously, they notice those uh, details. But not just that. It's because I feel that I belong there and I hang out regularly mm -hmm. that this creates motivation already that, hey, I want to engage. Mm -hmm. And then it happens that, oh, yeah, I'm improving my English, speaking my English as a side effect almost. <laughs> yeah. I, came, addition, I, came yeah. for my, I came for my accent, but I stayed for the family. I stayed ah, yeah, for the group. I <laughs> yeah, that, that expression. Come yeah, exactly. Accent, stay for the community. That should be on a T-shirt, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, so funny. Absolutely. Yeah, we've known some of the same people for literally for years. Like you and I started this. I said, I want community to be the first and most important thing because because what is language about? It's about connection. What is what generally what is accent really about? When we say accent, what we really usually mean is comprehensibility, number one. And then number mm. two, some confidence and security and feeling able to, for example, speak up at work or wherever that is. So I feel like community is first. And that creates the environment for which everything else thrives. But you don't sell that to people, right? You don't say, come for the confidence, come for the community. We have we say, come to change your accent. And people yeah. know that's what they want, but what they don't know is what they need. And what we need, all of us need community and we need to feel comfortable and welcomed and just just to know that there's 
it's not a top down thing it's a, it's an us thing so when we think of like the hierarchy or the structure of a traditional classroom or course we don't even use those words really we don't use the words course or class we call it club we say session hey we have a session on tuesday we don't even like to use those words so much because it's so much more about just the experience i think that yeah it's have. more informal uh-huh it's for instance sometimes we share youtube videos yeah about a creator that hey I was just because I'm a follower of a creator okay. and it just pronounced something that hey, I find this funny, something mm -hmm. it's odd. Yeah, let me ask Biak about that. Mm -hmm. Or just by the pleasure that it's off topic and it happens that the content is in English. Uh, or it's just my videos and I share one of my videos mm -hmm. and something like that. It's not that, hey, let's do just one practice. It's a drill. Yeah. It's very informal. Some people are act voice actors. Mm -hmm, sure. Mm -hmm. So they do a monologues mm -hmm. and they share their monologues mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Exactly. And since Maybe it's, it's a more personal or professional. Yeah, it's more personal. Yeah. And it's a community. It's 24-7. Mm -hmm. So it's not that, hey, and once uh, the session is done, I unplug. Yeah, and then yeah. I will come back next week. It's yes. always there. And to me, that's where the this idea of classroom dissolves and it's all real world. It's me using my language, being a the person that I want to be and being comfortable in my voice hmm. in a place that supports that. And I think you noticed a couple of things. And one was, I thought it was funny. You said, hey, P did you know people are hanging out unsupervised <laughs> in the <laughs> chat when you're not around? Tell, tell that little story. I think that's funny. Yeah, it's because I didn't know the precise word. Yeah. And because of machine learning and something, you have supervised learning and not right. supervised. Mm -hmm. And it's, hey. You can hang out anytime, not when there are scheduled sessions. Mm -hmm. And someone wanted to practice their acts, their speech. He said, I will be practicing here. If someone wants to join, feel free. Mm -hmm. And it happened that someone else joined. They both stayed for, I don't know how long, but yeah. for, for a while. Yeah. 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 Just hanging out. Yeah, so, just and hanging it's out. not supervised <laughs> in the sense that there's no coach. It's yes. just peer to peer. Exactly. Maybe we can change that. There was no formal coaching going on by me i'm sure there was still peer-to-peer -peer coaching because that's what we do uh, in exactly. our sessions too is that i what i love to see is it's not just me correcting people it's i'm correcting people but i'm always asking people hey guys write these things you hear in the chat box as this is happening in real time because it keeps people engaged right and just everybody else because we have hot seats and people randomly pop into the hop seat hop, sorry ran, people randomly hop into the hot seat so that they can get their feedback. But it, even if you're not the person in the hot seat, you're still getting so much out of that. You're thinking, hey, is that a thing that I heard? Is it? Is that not the case? Let's check. Or did I really hear it? And Bianca missed it because she was busy typing up this other thing too. So I like to have this. I love to have the peer coaching all the time. Mm. And so that's why I really enjoyed hearing that, hey, somebody that was just like, hey, let's hang out. And I wasn't even there awesome that's exactly why those things exist because the club is not just about me it's about all of us it's mm -hmm. about you guys too and the fact that people feel super comfortable doing that 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 warms my heart a lot yeah and i, I think there was another thing too that you mentioned about somebody yeah, yeah before that yeah before that let me before my i forget this in my oh, okay cool, go ahead. yeah <laughs> to expand on what you said is mm -hmm. we said at the beginning that if you're shy or something, you can just have a passive role and listen mm -hmm. if you want. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you're wasting your time. And precisely, as you mentioned, you can get out of value from someone else's mistake that, oh, mm -hmm. I wasn't aware that I'm doing the same mistake as I did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But instead of doing this mistake myself, someone yes. else did the mistake before me, and I learned from that mistake. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And when you're in a... I don't know, you have been in the community for a long while that you have improved a lot mm. and you're more aware mm. is when you can notice the, the errors, mistakes or inaccuracies yeah. in someone else's. Even if mm. I don't pay attention, mm. that sounded not good mm -hmm, and so on. Mm -hmm. And that is a learning process. That means that even if I don't speak, just by um, identifying errors for someone else, I'm improving. Yes, because, hey, exactly. Because it's... Especially when, let's say, voicing, that it's in the middle ground, as an example. Yeah. It's on the fence, right? Hey, mm -hmm. now I'm more accurate to distinguish, hey, I have built, let's say, a more American ear yeah. that 
So I think you want the voice, but not enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, not enough. Mm -hmm. And before... yet people get so good. Sorry, people get yeah. so good. They're like, they are noticing things that they, in other people, that they mm. used to not even be aware of. Like they didn't yeah. even know the concept of voicing, let's say, right? Mm. And so they didn't know that they were making the mistake at all. Sometimes they hear, then they know. And then they hear the mistake in someone else and they think, oh, I guess that's what I sound like when I make that mistake, yeah. right? A lot of us don't even have an awareness of that. So being in a group situation is in my mind often more beneficial than having a one-on-one -on -one session. And by the way, it's so much cheaper. So it's like, yeah. join our club, get into the sessions because you're getting way more than you thought, right? Like we said earlier, I think we said you come for the accent, but you stay for the community. Yeah. And so you don't even realize all the other benefits that you get from this. Yeah, totally. So, and you were going to, you were going to mention once, I think something about that somebody had just joined. And one of the first things they did was talking about getting together and giving some advice and giving some unsolicited kind of feedback, things like that. Do you remember that? What you were going to say about that? Yes. So it's, for instance, someone joins, okay, let me wait until the next session. I will get the, on board. I will wait for my turn, all of that. But some people are like more uh, proactive is, hey, we have done the session today. We finished. Mm -hmm. and, but that doesn't mean I finished my, my, my learning. Is I want mm -hmm. more. It, yeah. What they can do. So, yes, I identified because it was the first time that I showed up. Yeah. So it was like an assessment kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's, oh, I am clueless. I don't know even the phonetic alphabet, all of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have to work on my voicing, the, the ages and all of that. Yeah. But, okay, good to know. I need to work on that. But what do I do with this, right? <laughs> now what? <laughs> yeah, because mm -hmm. perhaps I only enrolled on pre-made courses mm -hmm. or preparing for an mm -hmm. exam, the, the TOEFL of that. Mm -hmm. But yes, mm -hmm. if you told me to practice on the voicing, let me Google in YouTube, let yeah. me search on a video on that or something like that. Mm -hmm. Then you ask for advice, you get advice from someone in the community who already did this, or perhaps not necessarily voicing something else, but it's on the in the speech in, in English. Mm -hmm. so, this is just examples we're mentioning, but it's there's a great deal of variety of something you can yeah. work on. Yeah. Exactly. And actually, to mention something cool that we have is when people join our feedback club, then they have their own area. We can call them a folder, right? Mm -hmm. And at the top, they can tag what they're working on. For example, we keep saying this word voicing, but maybe it's vowels or consonant clusters or connected speech. And maybe they don't even know what to choose and they don't even know what those things mean. But like you said, the first time that somebody jumps into the hop, hot seat, can't say it, hot <laughs> seat, they get, they're going to get like a mini assessment, right? And we're going to see the patterns or we're going to say, hey, it seems like you need to work on, I don't know, your R's. And then yeah. what you can do in your folder is you can tag, hey, I'm working on my R's. I'm working on my vowels. So we can see that about somebody. So we can say, hey, oh, here's some R's that you missed. I know you're working on R's, for example. And you can see that those things can disappear over time. You can take off the R's once you're doing better at those. And then you can start working on things you didn't even notice before. You couldn't notice because you were so busy doing the other thing. Hmm. Maybe then it's time for rhythm or something like that. So yeah. I love how we have that set up. I would like to quickly share my own example. Mm -hmm. Before starting the committee, you told me, hey, you should work on your vowels. Mm -hmm. I remember you you told me two things to work on. I forgot the second, mm -hmm. but I remember vowels because I would have never guessed that. Is uh -huh. vowels really? Of all of the English, uh -huh. you, I need to work on vowels? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Is, yeah, but what do I do with this? Yeah, it's <laughs> good to know, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh -huh. Now what? Now what? Yeah, Did now what? Direction. Yeah, actually, I had no direction. Then I realized, oh, in English, you have front and back vowels, are like mm. many different languages. Mm -hmm. But if I was back then, I was in the community, I will just hang out. Hey, I want to practice this. Blah, 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 blah. And very quickly and easily, I will have uh, a hook I can start with. It's, mm -hmm. oh, okay, now I know one of the ways. It's not yeah. the way. It's yeah. one of the ways or several. And practice this in, and I will have improved a lot quicker. Exactly. Uh, like this, but it's not about the um, quickness or the time, the investment. Mm -hmm. It's about that it doesn't feel like you're working uh, on your accent. Ah. It's just, as I mentioned before, it's a side effect. It's like mm -hmm. I watch Netflix in a foreign language, and as a side effect, 
I practice that language. <laughs> but I want to watch the Netflix, and it mm -hmm. happens that there's the dubbing. Mm -hmm. So it mm -hmm. has to be that language, only the mm -hmm. captions are in English. Mm -hmm. So it's a side effect that I practice that language. Exactly, from the entertainment. Yeah. Same thing here. I think we come for the experience, like we said, and mm -hmm. we're getting so much more out of it. And and I think what you mentioned was important too. Like maybe I didn't even know what I needed, but somebody very quickly will tell me, hey, work on this and this, at least to start. And then you have direction. Mm -hmm. And then you can really take action. Because one of the one of the things is watching videos or using like a like an app or something is that you, you feel like you're doing a, a whole lot of something you feel really busy but you don't you can't really how should i say mark your um, you can't really notice your progress and it's not very detailed usually so mm -hmm. here you're getting detailed feedback and you're getting like yeah. like in the direction you're getting encouragement you're comfortable in your space like you said you look forward to going when you're not there people miss you all these things I, that you didn't realize go ahead i think we we could summarize everything we have said that everything that the community provides mm -hmm. cannot be replaced with AI. With artificial <laughs> My job is safe for a while. Still. Because with, yeah, I can ask GPT or any AI, but it's the opposite of being in a community. Mm -hmm. and feel that you belong in the community, you hang out, the mm -hmm. people you get mm -hmm. used to. It's, it's mm -hmm. very sterile if you mm -hmm. talk to an AI. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think, if you don't I want... think even we learned that back in COVID, right? When suddenly we yeah. got cut off from humans and, and like physical meeting. Yeah. And then we got on Zoom and then we realized, oh, this is great, but it's not the same, right? So if you're thinking that this club is, is a classroom, it's not a classroom, it's a community and it's a as live as we can get at least because we have members from where you're in Spain, right? I'm in Mexico yeah. right now, but I'm from the US. We have people from Egypt, from Nigeria, Germany, Lebanon, Russia, like all over the place. I'm sure, I'm sorry if I'm forgetting the, the countries. There's plenty of people who have been. Argentina. We also Argentina. Have. Yeah. In the group, Uruguay. I'd have to sit down and make a list. We should make a list, in fact. But <laughs> I think the, yeah. I think the point is too, like we, so we're very multicultural. Like we said, mm. we come from different backgrounds, from different norms. Maybe it's not okay to correct the teacher in my culture or correct another student in my culture, but we've created our own culture here. And when we, how should we say, we onboard somebody with that in mind, we say, hey, this is how we do things here. This is our procedure. And, it, and that's cool. That's totally fine. But this is why we exist. And this is what we found really works for long lasting change. So I think it's super important. And you mentioned something too, is that I think for the first time you had seen that I, I had like an American flag and you had mentioned like mm -hmm. that part of my multiculturalism too is probably what makes people feel comfortable as well. I remember yeah. when you said that. Because you don't feel the stereotype, the American stereotype. Mm -hmm. You lived in France. I think first was mm -hmm. France, then France, yeah. Jordan. Uh-huh. As but well. It's, it's, it's not, I think it's not a common place to move for an yeah. American. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you speak at the very least, you speak three languages fluently, not just yeah. English. I would say, yeah. So you could appreciate you can appreciate more than the average monolingual American mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who has only lived in his own country. Yeah, exactly. he, his or her, sorry. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Even And when I was yeah. a kid, I was obsessed with countries and maps and capital names. And I knew all the countries and I knew all the capitals by heart. And even yeah. now when somebody joins, sometimes they're from a place where many people don't even know the name of the country, let alone the capital city. And they're so surprised yeah. that I know what it is. <laughs> yeah. An American good at geography. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> who has a passport? Yeah. Who lives in another place? Yeah. It's not something yeah. people always expect. So I think it's part of the welcoming experience. And, but, and by the way, we end up talking, I think a lot about food and, yeah, I was and about to mention that, different that, things. Yeah. That yes, the, the main theme is the language, especially the mm -hmm. spoken language. Mm -hmm. But we also be ha, uh, we are also sidetracked, especially in the office hours or yeah. any time, about culture. And I think mm -hmm. recently I asked questions about culture. Mm -hmm. that, how American will say that? Like mon uh, dual monitor yes. or dual screen? Uh huh. Uh huh. Very and, fine details yeah. that only a person who's from there could really tell mm -hmm. you. And often we're like talking about myths. I think somebody the other day was asking about vodka drinking in Russia and they said, oh, actually tea is really common. And we started digging into the history of tea in mm -hmm. Russia and things like that. And we just end up talking about such interesting things that you can't really plan for. And do yeah. you remember how we used to talk about that a lot? What was the, the myth, term? The yeah, myth of it? the object, the myth of the objective. The myth of the objective. Exactly. Yeah. So, so come for your accent 
but stay for all the things that you don't even know is going to happen. I think is probably a good way to summarize it, right? Yeah, yep. absolutely. You don't know what you're missing until you're not there. Totally. Oh, that's a good way to put yeah. it. Yeah. And and it's hard to put that into words. So it's hard to like sell and market this thing. And mm -hmm. so what we say is come change your accent in small group classes. And I don't like the word class, but I have to use it because that's what people have in their minds. But really, it's mm -hmm. so much more than that. And you, my friend, are a huge part of that. I never could have done all this without you. So I want oh, to say thank, thank you. you for literally being there since day one. And you've known, you basically get to know everybody too. And people get to know about you as well. So I think it's been like yeah, such a wonderful a, experience. A, a very short anecdote is that someone joined the community. Mm -hmm. We had the first call, video call. Yeah. And hello, who are you? It's the first time I'm seeing you. Uh -huh. But the person who was already familiar with my face, because... <laughs> Do you remember That's that? That's right. Yes, I remember yeah. because yeah. they you you were confused. I was confused. Yeah. I thought, had they been here before? No, it's their first time. Yeah. And but they knew you because they had seen some of your videos before. Uh, exactly. Yes. So it was so like, I know you, but you don't know me yet. Exactly. You know? yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. So maybe we'll leave it at that for today. We're talking today about having a safe space for learning, mm -hmm. which is a pretty broad term, as we said, but it's really, we're talking about community and you can only be in a community when you feel safe in that community and you learn so much more when you feel safe in that community. Yep. So that's what we've been trying to achieve here with our Discord community now expanded. And we hope that we can get a lot more members in. We've really worked hard to make this what it is. And we want more members to join because it's such a wonderful thing. We want more people to come. And yeah, thank you guys. Thank you so much for coming today and to talk about it. I know My that pleasure. you and I see each other all the time. Yeah. And, and I want people to know that I want people to see your face and hear your voice and know that you're part of that welcoming. You're the moderator. Mm. You're there to help. And this is the thing that we've created to help other people. So we just want to get more people involved in this to form the community and to actually meet the goals that they have in terms of their language and their accent. So I can't thank you enough. And I know that I will see you soon, yep. <laughs> but we'll say goodbye to our listeners for today and we'll see you soon. Yeah. See you soon. Bye guys. Thanks a lot. See you soon. If you found this episode helpful in any way, please subscribe and leave a review. It's actually really helpful to me. Now, before I go, I have two tasks for you to do. First, I want you to register and come to my free monthly masterclass. They're on the last Thursday of the month. In just one hour, you're going to master a specific American accent skill. For example, the TH sound or rhythm. The Zoom registration link actually changes each month. So the second and maybe more important thing I want to ask you to do is to sign up for my mailing list because you're going to get the registration link each month and you're going to get bonus materials before and after the master class that I only send to my email list subscribers. The email opt-in link is down in the show notes. Be sure to sign up for my mailing list and come to the monthly masterclass for free. I'm Bianca, your personal American accent coach, and I want you to know that your voice is your choice. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the show. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.